Welcome to the Heart of Healthcare podcast. We're taking a dose of our own medicine with a short summer sabbatical as we focus on some other projects. While we're away, we're going to be setting up a health centre in Switzerland and offering heart-based medicine to Ukrainian and Swiss families. We'll be back again with you in the fall. And until then, we thought you might like to listen to some earlier podcasts with some notable thought leaders in the medical world, which haven't yet been broadcast. We hope you enjoy the podcast. What about uh, uh, Qigong? How many of you? All right. <laughs> so thank you. Um, okay, so my life, and I totally devote my life after I was healed my, with my arthritis in my knees, bone spurts in my neck, in my lower back, and after I cure myself with the suicidal depression. From that moment on, I committed my life to Qigong. So that was 1988. Of course, I grew up in China, and China that was like uh, that is a culture of Qigong, culture of Qi, culture of Tai Chi, and culture of acupuncture, right? So, so we are used to those terms and words every day, living with Qi. But really, getting into the understanding of Qi. <clears throat> How to apply qi in our daily life to help us to go deeper into our heart to discover the healer from within, discover the intelligence from within. That is a completely different story. And the qigong has been kept secret in China for thousands of years. And lots of people, even now in China, when you ask people, do you know about qigong? Yeah. Do you want to learn Qigong? Wow, that is a very difficult thing. It's a very mysterious thing because it can really do wonders in your life, for your life. So I'm Chen Yilin. I study everything about the universe, about Qi, the power of Qi, how the power, how the Qi works in the body, how the Qi works in the planet, how the Qi works in the land. How did she work in your computer? How did she work in the chair? How did she work in everything? So what is this chi then? <clears throat> chi is it, uh, not the same as, uh, as like, uh, energy. <clears throat> Pretty soon I will cover that area. In the en- entire universe, we, everything and any mechanisms were built up with chi. Our body actually is the miniature of the universe. And in this small universe, the things, I mean, the power, the force, the intelligence really operate the chi. I mean, operate the body is chi. So without the chi, we cannot do anything. I will share with you how I came up with this definition about chi just in a few minutes. Qi is a form of intelligence. And life force is also a form of Qi too. It is an advanced intelligence in your body. This we call it advanced because the Qi runs the, the system and the Qi operates the system and the Qi maintains the system and the Qi connects with the divine, with the universal energy. It has, the chi has many heads, many, many heads. <clears throat> when you talk about the life force in the body, it is a force. When, we, when you talk about the management of the body, chi is a manager. When you talk about the refine of the body, it is the intelligence knows what to do exactly for you. For instance, for, um, for instance, when you get a paper cut in your hand without doing anything, giving it one day or two, it heals up by itself. It has its own intelligence. When you have a cold, just give yourself a, a few days resting, drink some water without medication. You are able to heal yourself completely. So, now, Qigong is the way to work with this life force. It is a way. 
It is a beautiful way. Um, I remember at that time <clears throat> when I had severe arthritis in my in my knees. I played basketball. I love basketball, and uh, so in 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 China in college, I played at um, the college division. I I was the one who who did the uh, three point scoring. I was pretty good, but when I came to the United States, I found out I had I cannot make a living on that. <laughs> so <laughs> then I decided to switch my gear, and <clears throat> I when I play, I had a lot of injuries in the ankles, in the in the knees, in the lower back, in the neck. So gradually, and plus some other injuries I had, I had bone spot in my neck, in my lower back, and severe. Pain in my knees. At that time, when I had the injury in my knees, my doctor said, "Well, you you need to have a knee replacement, knee surgery." I was so young for that. I said, "Well, and、uh, I don't like that." But the doctor said, "Even with the surgery, we cannot guarantee you that you will be okay with your knees." So I hang out, and with the pain, I tried acupuncture, tried everything, herbal medicine. Injection, but nothing worked. Until one day, I went to the、uh, Qigong master coming to town, and he said, "I mean, many friends told me by sitting in his workshop, doing the meditation together with him, possibly you could heal very severe challenges in your life." So since I already tried everything, he doesn't bother to try one more thing. So I went to his workshop. Sitting on the dirt ground, seven hours and a half meditating, doing some very simple movement. The swollen in my knees, one hundred percent gone, and the pain in my knees, eighty percent gone. Then after that, I practice the simple movements, which now I'm sharing with the people too, for two months, and since then my knees have been healed completely, completely. And my flexibility of the body even became better. <clears throat> and later on, at the time, I was the dean of a college. I, so every year we had an annual medical checkup. Then I found out the bone spot in my neck, in my lower back, also disappeared. And then later on, I found out my suicidal depression because of cultural evolution, also completely gone. So I. Found this was a wonder. This is a life force. This is intelligence inside us to do all this work. I did not take any single pill for healing myself. Then life fo- fast forward to the United States, 1992 to 93. I was an exchange teacher from China in Minnesota. <clears throat> My college at that time、uh, was to train people to become. Teachers in the elementary schools and high schools. So I observe American educational system, and I wanted to bring that back to China to share with my colleagues. Then, in that one year, I had a chance to share Qigong with people in the United States. So I had my Qigong first Qigong class. So five people showed up, and among these five people, two people signed up the class by mistake. <laughs> Forty <laughs> percent. So, but anyway, so in that class, there was one lady came with an oxygen tank who had been on oxygen for six and a half years, diagnosed in Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic wanted her to have a lung transplant, and she didn't want to do it. She said, "Anyway, I'm not going to live too long, and I don't want to have somebody else's lungs breathing inside me." And so she did not do that. In the winter time, her son picked her up with a pickup truck, brought her to the class. She came unwillingly. She was mad that evening because later on I asked her, "So can, why you are here?" You know, she, she said, "I don't want to come, but my son did." I said, "Well, you don't have to listen to your son." He said, "Well, I had only one son. I have to listen to her to to him." And my son said, "Ma." You need to come to learn Chinese breathing. And I told my son, "I've been breathing for 60 years. I don't need somebody from other side of the world to come over here to teach me how to breathe." But anyway, you are here now. 
So uh, she relaxed. I did some demonstration. And she said, in the, I said, well, before we start the Qigong, I'm going to do a demonstration healing your, uh, uh, for healing. So any one of you had any aches and pains in the body? She said, yeah, I had pain in my wrist because every day I've been pulling this oxygen tank for six and a half years. I had a couple of tunnels. Can you do something? I said, yes, put your hand on the table. And she did. So I sort fingered it, clear the blockage, and give energy back. Five minutes, I ask her, open your eyes, try your hand. And she did. And the pain went away. She was, is that real? I said, yeah, it is real. That's the chi. And you can learn this too. She said, can I? Yeah. Then she stayed. Eight weeks later, one hour and ten minutes a week in a class. She practiced the movements I share with her in the class. She went back to the Mayo Clinic. The Mayo Clinic doctor said, we don't know what you, what you did. All the lung scar tissues disappeared. Now you got a completely new lungs. You don't need oxygen anymore. So since then, then the, um, the, uh, the St. Paul newspaper uh, in Minnesota did an article on this event. Um, then all of a sudden, for, from five people, and next class, I got 65 people. <laughs> and it was just so overwhelmed. You know, the, and then from that moment on, I knew my mission. My, the rest of my life is Qigong. So then I went back to China after this one year. I went to a cave to study with the masters, sitting in the cave, a, a fasting eight days in a row. Only three little bottles of water for eight days. You might say, wow, eight, eight days, no food, just a small bottles of water, you know, three, and you can survive? Yeah, I'm still standing over here smiling, <laughs> right? And through that intensive training, finally I found out Qigong is very, very simple. It's very powerful stuff. The world should know this power. When I came out from the cave, in my meditation, I was given this message, a healer in every home, in a world without pain and suffering. So with $73 in my pocket, without any hesitation, I quit my job and went to the United States, starting my life with a sleeping bag, $15. I spent that $73, buy the sleeping bag, and... Uh, and then $5 for the hamburger <laughs> to start my life in the United States. And now we have 60 million students all over the world. So, um, now, when we talk about Qi, why Qigong is that powerful? Mayo Clinic doctors, after that, they did a study with me on pain management. It was very successful. And later on, a scientist in Chicago did a study with me on bipolar. It was extremely successful. And another pain management study also in Minnesota too, it was also very successful. So far we did three medical, I mean Western medical um, <laughs> studies and they all worked very well. And the people kept asking me about uh, the, the power, the, the wonder of Qi. These things only God can do, you know. Why Qigong is that powerful? Well, why it is powerful? First of all, let's pay attention to this concept, the body and chi. <clears throat> Do you think we have a chi first? We have energy first existing in the universe before we have a body or we have a body first, then the chi comes? Chi first. Fabulous. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Congratulations to you to the recognition that the chi exists first. The body was designed for the chi to flow, to operate for the life living on this planet. The chi comes down, not because you have this body, the chi comes to you, because the chi is over here and you want to experience the beautiful things on this planet. Then you need a body. It is just like the electricity. The electricity. The electricity exists first. 
then we have all the systems to work with the electricity. The same thing. So this is very important. And the qi, once the qi getting into the body, this qi has been used for healing, for personal liberation, and for enlightenment. Why do these things happen? So first of all, for healing of the physical body, as a force, it operates the body. It has the mechanism. It has the energy to run your body properly for you so that you can walk, you can do anything you want. And of course, including healing. And also Qi has the intelligence. Now, so when we talk about the intelligence, uh, let's, let's, let's go back over here. There's something I, I need to point it out. Yes, it's also very important too. That's the second thing, is in the difference between qi and energy. Western medicine, Western culture or science and science focus on the energy. That's that's great. Energy cannot be created, cannot cannot be destroyed, but energy can be transformed. As a form of energy, it, you can transform it constantly from one form to another. So based on this concept, everything in the Western world was developed based on this concept. So uh, like I, the, in, in, in medicine, hey, you know, the energy is here. We cannot do anything. And, uh, but as a form of energy, we can transform it, put this concept into reality, into practice. You can replace a limb. You can move replace an eye, you can replace something, a part of the body. That is fabulous. But when you go down a little bit deeper, let's talk about the, 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 the illnesses. Illnesses has three categories. The first one is the physical one. The physical uh, illnesses, aches and pains, etc. And then the second one is emotional blockages in the body anger, frustration, and depression, etc. And there's another one, is a the spiritual one. There's some illnesses is not only from what you are doing today, or what you have been doing now, it's inherited from your past life. You bring that energy to the message, to this so-called life, and that's why there's a lot of medications cannot do for this kind of uh, challenges. I can tell you a lot of uh, the, uh, the stories through my uh, lifetime healing. Let me tell you one story. One little girl, two years and a half, since she was born, she just could not touch her head on the pillow to sleep. Each time, when she was so tired, she, her, her parents put her down. She was crying, screaming with the pain. So the parents had to hold her all the time on the shoulders, take, take, take turns to do so. So uh, after seeing lots of doctors going to many, many hospitals and could not find an answer, finally his uh, the, the parents, uh, psych, uh, uh, the friends, a psychologist recommended them to bring the daughter to see me. So when I did the healing, when she came to my uh, office, I tried to test whether that was the case because the parents said, even you, when she had hair, when, even you touch one piece of hair, she would scream for pain. Isn't that weird? And uh, when she was playing on the floor, I tried to touch her hair. As soon as I touched only one piece of her beautiful golden hair, she was crying, screaming. Then I turned in. I did a healing on her. I turned in. Then I found out in, his, in her previous life, she lived in a very wealthy family, and she had a beautiful home. And one day, when she was combing her hair, accidentally, she knocked down 
the candle, and the candle burned the hair. And because the fear, she ran around the the hair, burned the curtains, and then the whole house got burned down. And she carried that information to this sort of life. So I turn in. I help her with this chi, this intelligence, to help her to balance the energy, to release the fear, to go back to that same place, to help her to clear that wrong information got up in her sister. Three sessions, she was cured forever, no pain anymore. Now she's twenty six. I can go on and on with these stories with you. Now here, what I'm telling you is the chi has an intelligence. It connects you to the divine energy. It connects to a much deeper source to help you to activate that power to fix the damaged tissues. Like Esther Choiho, with the oxygen tank for six and a half years. How could the Lung scar tissues, lung scar tissues, disappeared within eight weeks of practice of qigong because she, through that practice, she woke up the intelligence in the body, the consciousness of the body, connect to the origin information. Now we do, we do, nowadays we're talking about stem cell, right? You connect your. Back to the origin information and re-download the information to clear the blockages. We love meditation. Meditation comes from sleeping. Any techniques you are using for meditation, mindfulness meditation, and、uh, whatever forms of meditation you you do, actually that originally come from sleeping. Why sleeping has that power? Why? When you get tired, why do you want get? You want to sleep. Why do you get tired? Because your body's energy is out of balance, and there's two types of energy in the body: yin and yang. You balance the yin and yang. Once the balance comes back, then hallelujah, you're up again. This is the body. So now, in Western philosophy, you say everything in the universe is energy. Beautiful. So in Eastern philosophy, everything in the universe is chi, is a force with intelligence and consciousness. Once you wake up this chi to help you, and the chi knows exactly what to do for you. That is the coolest thing. When you talk about energy, from Western medicine perspective, you talk about controlling. I can direct the energy to go this way. I can control doing things like this and that. But when you talk about qi, you cannot control qi. You work with qi. You work with the qi, and you help qi to flow. You know, life on this planet is only doing two things. Only doing two things. You know what these two things are? Number one, to have fun, enjoy life. No matter what you do, you like to become a doctor. You like to become a, a acupuncturist. You like to become an artist. Doing all these things because you, doing doing it, you feel you enjoy yourself, having fun, all right. And number two, work with work with and protect chi. That's the second thing. You need to work with the chi and protect the chi. If you don't protect the chi, you don't. If you don't work with the chi, very soon. You are going to find you have energy blockages, and you also need to protect the chi from leaking, from running away. And the chi has that system to to help you. And you, the only thing you need to do just get yourself into the moment, so that you can awaken this chi to help you. For instance, just now I talk about the electricity system. The electricity system is. Powerful, it's beautiful, but when the、uh, electricity system, like you have a socket, you know, or you have uh, uh, something leaking with the electricity, can that can that e- electricity fix that socket, fix the leakage of the electricity? No, you have to have、uh, 
somebody, a handyman or somebody to come to fix it. Right? But she can fix that for you. It has the intelligence. Paper cut, lung scar tissues, my bone spot in my back, in my neck, and my suicidal depression. And the qi, once you awaken the qi inside you, you are able to have this qi to fix all these things for you. That's why the Chinese masters, Qigong masters, and Chinese, the best med, um, the Chinese medicine doctors in the history, they're also Qigong masters, said, in our body, we have the most powerful medicine in it. We were born with it. Now, through my 30 years study, I discovered these seven dimensions of healing. The first dimension is the illnesses. This is a, uh, once a person has diagnosed, has been diagnosed with something, then this is the symptom. Like you have a lump in the neck. Hey, it's so simple. Cut it or have target the lump in the neck. The surgery was very success successful, but the patient dies. When these things are repeated very often, then what people start opening the, opening the mind. They say, what is the cost of this lump in my neck? So now you are searching for something we call the direct connection to the symptoms. Ah, the direct connection in the body. Hey, this is the meridian, the stomach meridian, the liver going through. Hey, no wonder in the past I feel heaviness in my liver. In the in the, in the evening, you know, my I had, when I sleep, I had kind of a bitter taste in my mouth, the dry mouth. Ah, that is it. So try to work on the liver by clearing the blockages in the liver. And the tumor over here in the neck very possibly is going to go away. But now you expand your mind to a bigger picture. You say, what kind of things could cause congestion in the liver then? Now you're looking for the direct, indirect connection to the body, the living environment, uh, the diet. And many, many other things, you know, sleeping, uh, sleeping disorder, or not, uh, not having enough exercise, etc. Then some people, I have a lot of clients say, I did all these things, but I still got sick. <laughs> what happened? Well, then you need to go to the next level. That is the mind, the heart, your emotions. And this, level is very, very important, the fourth dimension. That's the intersection of between reality and spirituality. After you get through the fourth dimension, now you are able to feel the vibration, the frequency, the light, which is the origin of life. And you go to that level. That's why also, when we say, open your heart, Actually, open what? It's not like a surgically open my heart. <laughs> and uh, my heart is right here. No. Open the connection between the reality and spirituality. In other words, open yourself connecting to the source. So that's why I just love Dr. Bon Bonhoeffer's concept, heart-based medicine. It is just so true. Once you open your heart, once you go to the heart level to open your chi to help others, that's the moment miracle happened. Dr. Bruce Lipton said, before the huge masses of the body went away, the person changed the perception of the life. And that is so true. Then after that, when you see the light, you go into the void. You go to the transformation. In the void, people said, you know, just like Esther Trejo, like what I experienced, when you get to the moment, you call it serenity, you call it peacefulness, you call it the quietness, 
That's the moment you transform the energy. You get yourself in touch with the origin of life, the life blueprint, or you might use like a, a, a modern term is a your stem cell vitality code. Why you need to go to that moment, feel the peacefulness, feel the serenity. Well, I believe everybody, except in a doctor a patch, you have a, a cell phone, right? You have a laptop, right? <laughs> Do you? Yeah. So if this, if your laptop, your your cell phone got messed up, what do you do? Turn it off and put it to sleep. Put it to meditate for five seconds and turn it on, and then everything is back to normal. In that five seconds off, what does your cell phone do? Reboost. That's what we do. You take a nap. You reboost. You go to bed. You sleep good. You reboost, and you bring that sleeping as a technique to now and meditate. You reboost, and qigong goes deeper than that. And then up to you get to that level, the void, the transformation. Then you are in the seventh dimension. You are the creator. You co-create your life with the universe. Our life, normally, 120 years. I、right, live over here on the planet. But if you do things well, working well with the chi, managing your emotion, your,、uh, your physical body, you are able to live much longer. There's a, a Chinese qigong master in、uh, in Qing Dynasty, Li Qingyun, Master Li. He lived 265 years. He married, he married twenty three times, and he had over two hundred children. You may say, "Well, you know, I I, I want everybody to live two hundred fifty years, right? But I don't want you to marry that many times." <laughs> and there's another thing is you know it's beautiful about this story is in, even in his hundreds. He was still able to produce, and for our our human, you know, so get,、uh, living on this planet right now, after you go over sixty, and usually that's difficult, right, to to reproduce, right. <laughs> But when he was interviewed by a reporter from England before he moved on in his life, this reporter asked him, "What makes you?" Live that law. You know what he said? I just have done what I am supposed to do. That is it. Very simple. What are you supposed to do then? That is the question. So, the first three levels is say、like, uh, the material level. I call it reality. Western medicine focus a lot on this area. That's why we are chasing our tail. From one. Pill to the other. The first pill might have something to do with the symptom, but after the first pill, the rest of the pills only take care of the side effects from other pills produced, <laughs> and not working on the even the symptom anymore. That's why ended up you have more problems than people like you. Open your heart, looking for some a bigger picture. Looking in the heart level to understand the power from within, the power of healing. Now you go to the heart, the mind level. So now here I'm I'm going to make a demonstration with you, right? So I want you to do a finger growing game with me. So、uh, I want you to open your hands like what I do. Find the first line in the left palm under the,、uh, under the palm. Under the hand, the first line, and go to the other hand. Find the same line, and then stretch your fingers open like what I do, and match these two lines together, and then slowly close your hands to compare your fingers, and see which hand your fingers is shorter or longer. Like mine, this right hand is a little bit shorter than the left side. All right, so that's that's great. Now I want you to put up your shorter hand. 
and put the other hand down. If your hands, uh, the fingers are the same length, they put up either, your hand will do. And put the other hand down on the left, right? So now I want you to focus on your heart. Put a smile on your face. And then say in your mind, my fingers are growing longer, 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 longer. I really feel from my heart, my fingers are growing longer, 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 longer. I really feel my fingers are growing longer, 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 longer. All right, now open your eyes, compare your hands. Cool, huh? All right, now shake your hands a little bit and say, my fingers go back to normal, and then compare, compare your hands. All right. Cool, huh? <laughs> Give yourself applause. That's the power of your heart. That's the power of your mind. The mind belongs to the heart. The mind is only part of the heart. Now I want you to do, uh, repeat this experiment. Um, but this time I want you to activate your heart energy to make it longer, faster. Right, just now I gave you like a, a, a 30 seconds or one minute maybe and to make your fingers grow that long. So this time you know which hand your fingers is short, all right? It's shorter than the other hand. So I want you to focus on your heart just for a second. Feel that warmth in your heart and put a smile on your face. Smile uh, stands for start my internal love engine. So you start your love engine, and then you just talk in your mind, say, I want my fingers grow longer. Now, put your hand up and compare your hands. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It's only two seconds. Hey, listen to this. Two seconds, you are able to grow your fingers that much. Yeah, <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> you do it with the toes. Right? Um, if you got a blockage in the body here and there, you talk in your mind. You activate the chi from your heart. You feel the moment. You bless your body in that way. You see, can you shrink the tumor? Of course. Can you transform that lung scar tissues? Of course. Yeah. I have a, I, we have helped a lot of people all over the world with all these different challenges, healing from migraine headache to cancer to HIV. In the, um, so you, you can visit our website, you know, springforestqigong.com, and you will find a lot more information. Then the uh, number five, number six, number seven, that is the spirituality. Because at that time, at, at that level, you don't talk about your physical challenge anymore. You go to that highest level to re-download the information, the origin of life, the life blueprint, whatever you call it, to help you to balance your yin and yang, to help you to fix the, any damaged tissues, to help you to refine your organs, refine your systems. And how can we do that? Well, Qigong. Qigong honor your physical body, putting your physical, the intelligence of your physical body together. Now, what, what is the physical intelligence? For instance, I discovered most of the important energy buttons, qi buttons in the body or range in the joints, in the hands. For instance, if somebody has a, uh, is having a stroke at this moment, and uh, you, you use a, a, a needle or something to pinch the tip of the fingers and have the little bit, little bit blood out, and the stroke stops. If this person is losing speech, you use it, anything sharp to pinch the tip of the ear lobe and get a little bit blood out, and you release the pressure 
and uh, the qi can uh, can do its work for you, and this the speech will be regained in two hours. Then you can go to the hospital to have uh, the doctors to take care of that. It is just like that simple. Put your, your I believe you know, again, most of you are doctors. If you, if a person's heart stopped beating, tried everything, nothing worked. And one more thing, you can help this person to regain the heartbeat. This is the last hope, based on what I know. Is right under the left arm, arm peak. You stick your finger inside, very firm, and pull hard like this. Thirty times, forty times. That can help to restart the heart. This is the energy button. So now the qigong movements, like what we did yesterday and today, they are all working with this, with these buttons, these energy qi buttons. I already said at the very beginning, the body was designed for the qi to flow. It's not the qi was designed for the body to run. So if you work with the qi, you work with the intelligence of your body. You are able to activate all this intelligence, and then you have an emotional intelligence. So it's give me just a couple more minutes, okay? So thank you. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. So the characters of qigong movement is slow, gentle, and deep, and you repeat this movement slowly so that you are able to activate this intelligence in the body to help you. And then, from the、uh, emotional perspective, you work with the emotion. Anger makes damage to the liver. Hate makes damage to the heart. Ninety-five percent of the heart attack has something to do with anger, right? And the、uh, anxiety makes damage to the pancreas, to the stomach. Grief makes damage to the lungs, and fears make damage to the. Kidney energy system, including the uh, uh, reproductive organs and、uh, the, the brain, etc. So now, if you add emotion into it, you use happiness. The vibration from happiness directly can benefit the balancing of your liver. Joy heals the heart. Peacefulness heals the limb system, stomach, spleen. Contentment heals the lungs. Gratitude balances the kidney energy system. Then, when you do qigong movement, you feel ah,、oh, I just feel so much joy. I'm happy, happy, happy. Even if you're not really happy, you just pretend you're happy.、Mm-hmm. Uh, by pretending, you get the same amount of qi activated, and then you are able to get into the moment of serenity. Then you're really into the top. The creator level, in the void level, to conduct the chi, to move the chi, it is just like that simple and that powerful. And everything I have see in the five elements healing movement and my other programs. So in in these two mornings, I already share four movements with you. So I have a book. I was born a healer and called born a healer. And when people say, "Wow, Chen Yi, you are so good! You was just have these talents. You have this、uh, gift. You were born a healer." I say, "Yes, so true. I have this gift. So do you. We are equal. I have a heart. You have a heart. And so, if you want to know more information about what we do, and here is the information. And so, may the forest be with you. <laughs> Thank you." Thanks for listening to this Heart of Healthcare podcast, brought to you by Heart Based Medicine. If you enjoyed the conversation, you'll find some free resources and more information at heartbasedmedicine.org. Please share this episode if you feel inclined, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. Until next time, thanks and take care.